Assalamu alaikum. Today we will talk about the interference of light. And when we talk about the interference of light, we must talk about the experiment which was performed by the scientist Thomas Young in the year 1803. And uh, this is called the double slit experiment. So, the scientist Thomas Young used a monochromatic light source and the word monochromatic light source means that this is a source that produces light with a known wavelength. Let's say lambda. So, <coughs> the wavelength of this light produced by this light bulb, for example, is known and fixed so that it can be used easily in doing the calculations so when the wavelength here is known it passes through the first slit so here we have the first slit through which the light passes and then it goes from that part then it passes through the double slit screen so the light passes from that part and that part then it's received by a screen when the light finally reaches this screen we can see that there are some dark areas and some light areas these are called fringes so, this is caused due to the interference of light. When the light passes through two sources here, interference takes place. So, at some parts, constructive interference takes place and accordingly light fringes appear. And in some parts, destructive interference takes place where the dark fringes appear. So, how to calculate the uh, distance between two successive fringes, either they were light or dark fringes? So, let's see. Let's say the first light ray passes like that, and the second one pass like that and they meet at that point so this distance will be y and now we need to calculate y R here is the distance between the double slit and the screen that receives the light. So, let's say that the first ray is R1 and the second ray is R2. We can note that R2 is a bit longer than R1 because it needs to travel an extra distance. This extra distance is, of course, the difference between R2 and R1. If we draw a perpendicular line falling from R1 and R2, we can note that now we have an isosceles triangle in here, and this is the extra distance. Okay, now we know where is the extra distance. Then, we have the inclination angle of light between the two rays, which is this angle, beta. In the right angle triangle, this one, sine beta equals the opposite over the hypotenuse, which is delta R 
over D. D is the distance between the two splits. So we can conclude from this that delta R actually equals D sine beta. Also, if we draw a line from the middle point of D connecting between the point of intersection of the two rays, so here we have a right angled triangle. So in this right angle triangle, actually this is the angle theta, and this is also the, the inclination angle, this is the same angle as that one, and basically we can say that sine theta in here equals y over the hypotenuse. But as always, theta in this case, in this experiment, is always very small so that the length or the distance between the double slit and the screen can be as same as or approximately equal to the length of the hypotenuse because they will be so close to each other. So instead of writing y over the hypotenuse, we can say y over r. <coughs> okay, so from this we can say that um, Delta R equals D Y R. Then Y will equal R Delta R over D. Now Let's talk about this delta r. What does delta r equal? Now, we said that this is a light ray, and this is another light ray, and we said that the light source that we used is monochromatic, so the wavelength is known. So if we say this, uh, if we say that this r1 has a wavelength like that, or its shape of the wave like that, and we got another ray going upwards so that they meet at that point. Now, we have an extra part, which is the delta R. If this delta R equals one wavelength, so it will cause a constructive interference. And I'll make it a little bit more clear. So if we have the axis like that, and this is our R1, okay? And then R2 is added. So R2 will come like this, and it has the same wavelength as R1. So this will cause a constructive interference because it will double the distances in here, it will pronounce the wave much more, and so it will cause a bright spot. But if this delta R equals half a wavelength, so this will not be the case anymore. Because we will notice that when R2 combines with R1, we will have something that looks like this. So, this will be a destructive interference, because the positive value of R1, if we sum it to the negative value of R2, we will always get a zero, because the value of R1 is just the same as R2, but it's negative. So, if we sum these together, we'll get zero, which is a destructive interference, and accordingly we get a dark spot. So, delta R, we uh, realize from what we have just said, equals m multiplied by lambda, and m here is an integer. 
So we can say 1, 2, 3, 4, and so on, or negative 1, negative 2, and so on. This, we don't have any decimals or fractions, just whole numbers. And of course, this is the case in constructive interference. But in destructive interference, delta r equals m plus half, as we have just said, because it's half the wavelength, m plus half multiplied by lambda. Let's substitute with this value in our formula. So y will equal the distance between the screen and the double slit multiplied by m multiplied by lambda over d in case of constructive interference or bright fringes or y will equal r multiplied by m plus half multiplied by the wavelength over the distance between the two slits in case of destructive interference. And this is how we get the distance between two successive fringes or the distance between two successive bright spots or dark spots in Thomas Young experiment. So I hope it was clear for you and thank you for watching. See you next time.